Now we're going to look at two examples, not to actually name them, but what we're more worried about is looking at the differences between them. We see that they both have the same backbone here of the molecule, the same base of our molecule. The chain is the exact same length. We see that they both have one substituent group, which we're going to circle here because this is actually what we're very concerned about. And so we look at our substituent groups here. We notice that each of these substituent groups has three carbon atoms each. And I'm actually going to letter these carbon atoms so that we can compare the two structures and make sure we're all talking about the same thing. So I'm going to draw this one, carbon A, carbon B, and C. I don't want to number them because I'm trying to um, avoid anything to do with the numbering that we use for naming. And so what I see is that these are three carbon groups and the prefix for three is prop. So when we look at the names, we know we're dealing with the prop in there. It's a side group, so we'll have propyl in there. But there's a difference. When I look at the way that the, ma the main molecule, the base of the molecule, this chain, is attached to that propyl group. And what I see in the molecule here on the bottom is that the base chain of the molecule attaches to the propyl group at carbon A. So it's at the end of that three carbon chain. And when that's the case, we actually call this a propyl group. However, because we have three carbons, and this is the first time we see this, we don't see this with ethyl because there is no carbon in the middle. And so when I get to propyl though, now instead of that connecting to carbon A at the end of the molecule, now it can connect to carbon B in the middle of that molecule. And what I see is that I call this group isopropyl. And that actually is part of the name of that substituent group. So the iso is used in determining alphabetical order because it's not telling us we have two of some group. It's saying we have one group which is an isopropyl group. Now, the more carbons we get in our substituent group, so when we get to four, the more ways there are to connect those atoms. The only one you're going to have to worry about here is isopropyl and recognize the difference in how that group attaches to the chain of the molecule.